Hello people, welcome to another tutorial. In case you're new to this channel, my name is Agnes. In today's tutorial, I will show you how I made this top. It has got these bell sleeves that I love so much. I used the granny stitch, which I think is a basic stitch. Even for beginners, it's quite easy, it's fast. So you will be able to make this even as a beginner. So what you'll need basically is your bust measurements. And with that, you can make it in any size that you want. So just put a tape measure around your bust see how many inches it is and then you can make this top in your size you can make it longer personalize it make it longer if you don't want a crop top or you can put a ribbing at the bottom this is totally up to you so if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do so let's get it to 200,000 subscribers thank you and let's go into the tutorial so you will need a tape measure like i said it's the most important thing we'll take a, f a quite a few measurements um you will need yarn of course i'm using this dk yarn it's size 3 yarn and it is 50 grams 133 meters i used about 6.5 six and a half of these it recommends 3.5 to 4.5 millimeter hook but i will be using a 3.5 millimeter hook use any type of yarn that you want with a hook size that it recommends uh, you will need scissors and i will be using a yarn needle this is optional if you don't have it we can we'll find other ways of doing it so we will work this top in panels first we'll do the front panel and this is identical to the back panel and once we have those two we join them together then we do the sleeves which we do up to the about the elbow above the elbow and then increase to make the bell sleeve and then we'll do this bottom which you can definitely change and make your own uh, bottom you can put you can make it a ribbing or you can just leave it like that anyway so we are going to start with one of the panels they are very identical so it doesn't matter you're going to make a slip knot and you are going to chain loose chains so this is my slip knot and we are going to make a chain using loose chains don't make them tight okay not tight loose okay loose chains yeah our foundation chain is going to be a multiple of three plus four chains okay a multiple of three plus four chains and we want to chain enough as our bust measurements divide by two minus two inches so i will chain my bust measurements is i'm extra small my bust measurements is 32 inches 32 inches divided by two that is 16 inches so 16 inches minus two is 14 inches because we're working in two panels right that is how tight my top is i leave out two inches because i want it to be tight and if you want it very loose then you can just chain your bust measurements divide by two not very loose but it's a bit loose if you want it looser then chain more inches all right so this is what i have this is my chain and it is 14 inches like i said we're working in two panels so my bust measurements is 32 divided by 2 in those two panels it's 16 minus 2 is 14 okay so if you don't want it as tight as mine th that tight fitting you can do your bust measurements divide by 2 and that's it okay you don't have to take off the 2 inches I take off the 2 inches because I want it tight you know more fitting so it's a multiple of three plus four so i had only changed three now i add one chain so now you're going to yarn over skip the first two chains into the third chain you are going to make a double crochet and this chain three the first chain three counts as a stitch so these are now two double crochets okay so at the start of the row we have two double crochets and then we are going to skip two chains and into the third chain we are going to make three double crochets in one chain. So I'll go back into that same chain. I make the second one and then third double crochet. So that's our first cluster 
or our second one because our first one had two two stitches and then i'm going to skip two chains and into the third chain i'll make my other cluster that means i will make three double crochets in one chain And then I'm going to skip two chains and into the third chain, I will make three double crochets. Okay, so this is what we are working with for row one. You're going to continue doing this until we get to the end. All right, so this is my row one. This is how it looks like. I have two stitches here at the beginning. So at the end, I also want to make two stitches. So I have three chains left. So I'm going to skip that three, the two chains and into the third chain, I will make two double crochets so that we are matching two double crochets at the beginning, two double crochets at the end. Okay, so this is what we have matches this side. So we are now going to go to row two. So at the first row, we have two stitches. Now second row, we are going to start it with, you're going to chain three, turn your work, and that counts as a stitch. So we only have one stitch, right? These are two, and there we'll only have one. And now we're going to work a cluster in between those. So in this space right here, we are going to make three double crochets. So at the beginning of row one, we had two stitches. At the beginning of row two, we only have one stitch. And this will be alternate like that. One stitch, two stitches before the clusters, okay? So now we are going to go into every space with three double crochets. into the next space with three double crochets. And we are going to do this all the way to the end and I will come at the end, show you how we finish it off. Oh, I made a mistake there. I have two stitches instead of three, so I put this out. So I fixed that, as you can see. And I'm going to work all the way to the end and come finish it off. So I'm at the end of row two and you can see this is my last cluster. So I have two stitches at the end. And what I will do is I'll work one double crochet on top of that chain three. On top of that chain three is where I will work my last stitch and it will be a double crochet. So we started with one double crochet, which was the chain stitch that counts as a double crochet. We end with one double crochet. If we start with two, then we end with two. So this is two here, then this is one. Okay. So it's going to be a repeat of these two rows. So now we are going to go to the next row. Okay, repeat of two rows. So. The next row is, is going to be two double crochets, right? So chain three, which counts as one double crochet. And now in this space right here, I'll make my second double crochet. Okay. This is the same as row one. Yeah. This will be the same as row four. So it's a repeat of two rows. Now I will go in with my first cluster in this chain space. Not chain space, but in the space because we didn't make a chain. So three double crochets in that space. Okay. And the stitches are like on top of each other. So you can see that's in every other row. So just go on with the clusters and I will meet you at the end just to show you one more last time how we do that, how we end the row and start the next row. So I'm coming to the end. This is how it looks. And now this is my last one. So this last one here is going to be two double crochets. 
okay so i'll put my one double crochet there if you want you can put it on top of the chain three but i will just put it in the space because it's easier okay so that's my second one and now we were, we matched our first row right this row and this one are identical now we need to make second row and fourth identical to fourth row so i'll chain three which counts as a stitch so i will just go in straight with the three double crochets in that space that's two and that is three so you see it's all identical so row four and row and row two are identical row one and row three are identical and you're just going to repeat this over and over and over again until you have the height of the top that you want so just measure yourself from your your shoulder to where you want your top to reach and that is how many inches you will chain okay so i'm just going to keep repeating this remember we are repeating two rows when you start with us one double crochet you'll end with one double crochet when you start with two double crochets you'll end with two double crochets and this is every other row so make sure you keep that in mind and don't make any mistakes all right so keep it straight keep it straight i will see you once i have my inches and i already did of course one of my panels <coughs> and i did about 12 inches so with this other panel i will also do 12 inches they're very identical there's no decrease there's no increase so it's just one rectangle i think yeah it's a rectangle so it's 12 and i'll meet you once you have two panels so this is my panel my second panel and you will cut off the yarn but leave a, a, a long string so it's 12 inches that's how long i want my top to be and yeah on this other side we started i started with 14 let's see how many i have now i have about 13 and a half yeah maybe i made some stitches tighter somewhere it doesn't matter anyway it stretches so Make sure you leave a long tail if you're going to use the yarn needle. And if you are not using the yarn needle, you don't need to leave a long tail. So get your other panel. See which side you want to be your outside, the right side, right? Which one do you want to be the right side? Because if you're using the yarn needle, you're going to be working on the right side. If you're using your hook, on the wrong side. All right, so... Two panels on top of each other decide what you want i'm using the yarn needle so i'm working my right sides are facing out and this is the inside if you were using the hook to join then it's the other way around and i put these stitch markers because i wanted to mark where my neckline is and you are going to do the same i'm a size extra small so i wanted to leave 5.5 inches in the middle and i had 13.5 which means 13.5 minus 5.5 i'm left with 8 inches so i have 5.5 here around the neckline and 13.5 minus 5.5 minus 5.5 is 8 so 8 divided by 2 which means i have 4 inches on one side here and 4 inches on the other side i just count how many clusters on one side then i count the clusters on the other side and then i know where to put my stitch markers so clusters which are 4 inches and on the other side should be also about four inches and then what is left in the middle is my neckline 5.5 this is this is for extra small for small and large you can use six inches and then for large and extra large 6.6 .6, i mean 6.5 and for extra large and extra large and extra large just use seven all right so we will need to join the shoulders together so i'm using my yarn needle I will just use the, what, what, what do they call this joining thing? Is it the butterfly? I'm not sure. If you're using the hook, then you're joining the inside out. 
and then you can just slip stitch along. But if you're using the yarn needle, then we are working on the right side and I will just go in from the inside, go under the two stitches like this and go to the other side from the inside like this in those two stitches. From the inside, under those two, two loops, from the inside on the other side, under those two loops, and I'm just going to keep doing that. We are doing it from the inside like this. And this is on the right side. If you're using the hook, you are working on the wrong side using slip stitches. Otherwise, then you will have to turn your work the right side. This one doesn't show, so I don't need to do it on the wrong side. It looks better when it's worked on the right side. So this is how it looks. I just pull, make it a tight. And I will work until where I have my stitch marker. Then once I'm done, I will also do the other side until I have my shoulders done. Then we come and do the sleeves. All right, so I went ahead of you, did this other side. I did my sleeve and I have everything joined together on one side. But do not worry because I'm going to show you exactly what I did on this side. I don't have it done. So... I already put my stitch markers where I want my sleeve to be and my sleeve is fitting. If you can look at my pictures, you see that it is fitting, right? I wanted everything fitting, nothing oversized and stuff. So I just took measurements around my arm, just put my tape measure around my upper arm and I had about 9.5 inches. So just measure around your arm. It's giving me a hard time because, you know, yeah, just measure around your arm. I had about 9.5 and I just rounded it off to 10 because I didn't want to have those little, little bits of point. I don't know, two, five, whatever. So I rounded it off to 10. So do the same measure around your arm and I rounded it off to 10, right? So, which means one side will be five and the other side will be five and the whole thing adds up to 10. So I measured five inches here, put my stitch marker, went on the other side, it's also five. Counted how many clusters I have on the other side to match the front and I put my stitch markers there. So I will leave that as the armhole and then we'll join the other side down. So 10 inches, if your arm is as small as mine, just leave the same. If not, it could be 11 inches, it could be 12 inches, it could be 15, depending on how big your arm is. We are going to join all this together at the bottom. And I'm also using the hook, not the hook, I mean the yarn needle. So I'll be joining from the outside if you're using a hook and you will be joining from the inside with a slip stitch or a single crochet, whatever you prefer. So put my yarn in and I am going to put it side by side which is quite a bit tricky since I already worked on the other side but let's see yeah like this so we're going to start from the bottom all the way to where the stitch markers are so I'll put my yarn through the very first stitch like this pull through and then to the other side the very bottom stitch like this leave a bit of a, a tail at the bottom and then pull it together Oh, it's out, so I repeat it. So we are going to be working in the outer stitches, okay? So I'll just be going through uh, 
and I am out of frame. Uh, I'm out of frame, but I think I will, yeah, I realized later on that I was out of frame. So yeah, here we are. Okay. So I'm going through every stitch. Make sure they are aligned. One side is aligned to the other. You don't want the rose notch, you know, aligned. So I'm going through the stitch on one side and then I do the same on the other side like this. You just have to watch. I don't know how to explain it. And then on this side, I go through in and out. Make sure everything is aligned. You don't want to be working on row five on one side and then row six on the other side. No, as in it has to be, the rows have to be aligned on both sides. And then on the other side, you just have to watch this because I don't know how to explain it. Work uh, on the outer stitch as possible. Bring it closer, maybe you can see better. I think it looks nicer like this because you don't really see it than when you use a slip stitch or single crochet, but it's it's preference if you prefer the single crochet which is much quicker by the way i would have preferred that but i just wanted to do something different this time around so yeah the nicer things take time yeah so that's how it looks and i'm going to continue doing this until i get the stitch markers all right, so I'm where the stitch markers um and yeah, this is our armhole. So I want to work a row of single crochets around the armhole before we work the granny stitch. So reattach your yarn and I will reattach at the bottom. I'll insert my hook like this and then pull my yarn through. And then chain one and make a single crochet in this very first stitch so i want you to see where i'm placing my stitches okay so this is how we are doing it in this space i place my stitch and then at the top here in this space here i place another stitch and then there's a right smaller space next to it like that and then in this space okay so it's like in the big space and then in the small space big space small space somewhere so it's like in the middle of the stitch and at the top of the stitch in the middle of the stitch and at the top of the stitch okay and I'm just going to do single crochets all around until I get to the bottom again. And then we will start on the granny stitch. So do that. See where I place them. Place them the same. And all around, I'll meet you back at the bottom. I went all around like this. I'm back and we're going to close this off with a slip stitch. So just like we did with the before, we are going to chain three and this counts as a stitch. So we are going to start with two double crochets. So in this very same stitch, I'll just make another double crochet, right? And now we are going to skip two stitches 
and then in the third stitch i'll make a cluster so i'll put three double crochets in one stitch just like we did with the back panels only that now we are working in rounds okay then i'm going to skip two single crochets and then in the third stitch i'm going to make three double crochets So you are going to do this, skip two in the third stitch, make three double crochets. You're going to do this until you come to the end and I will meet you so that we can, I can show you how to finish off the round because now we are working in rounds. Okay. So I'm back and for our rounds, this is going to be my last uh, cluster and for our rounds we're going to be working with ending with either one double crochet or just a slip stitch one double crochet or just a slip stitch so now i want to put a double crochet because when we start with two we end with one double crochet so that we can just make it nice and it looks like it's three stitches like another cluster so on top of that chain three i will make a slip stitch so now i have these three here okay yeah so now next we are going to chain three and this will count as a stitch so we are only starting with one double crochet so now we are going to make a cluster this counts as a stitch so no we don't we turn around yeah we turn our, our, our work around just like we're doing with the other rows when that we are turning we are working in round so now this will be my very first cluster so the first row started with two double crochets now we only start with one just like before the, on, the only difference is the ending okay so you are going to work three double crochets in every space until you get back here and i will show you how to finish off this row So once we get to the end, you are going to make your last cluster in that space. Yeah. This is where we had three double crochets. Now I'm going to work my last cluster. And to end this row off, we will just slip stitch on top of that chain three. So where we start with one chain, with the chain three, we slip stitch. And where we start with that two double crochets we end with one double crochet so chain three turn my work and now i make my second double crochet because that chain counts as a double crochet now i have my two double crochets okay and then i will go round or round back here make a double crochet in this space here just like we did with our first row there and then it's going to just be a repeat of this So go around with uh, three double crochets in every space and I'll just meet you at the end just to show you one more time how it is done. All right, so I'm coming to the end and remember this is a row where I started with one double crochet which was in form of a chain three. So I end that with just a slip stitch. Okay, sorry, I started with two double crochets so I end that with a double crochet just to make it three. So this, this was the row where I started with two double crochets. So I end with a double crochet. Like this. Okay. So this row matches row one. So row two should match row four and so on and so on. So for the next row, it's just going to be a chain three, which counts as a double crochet. And then we'll go straight into the clusters. okay now we go straight into the clusters so i'll make three double crochets in this chain space why do i keep calling it a chain space and there's no chain it is just a space so go around and then i will slip stitch at the top here and then we'll keep repeating this over and over again until you are at the at the top of your elbow just above your elbow then we'll make an increase so measure yourself from that top of your shoulder 
to your top of your elbow just above your elbow and see how many inches are there and then that's how mu much length you'll make before we start increasing so just keep repeating this it's self-explanatory where we start with two double crochets i end with one double crochet where we start with a, just a chain that counts as a double crochet i end with a slip stitch so repeat that and i'll meet you once we want to do the increases just above our elbow okay So I have my inches. Let's see how many I did. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I did 20 rows. And let's see how many inches these are. This is about 9 inches. So that's from tip of my shoulder to above my elbow. And now we want to make increases from now on. So yours could be 10 inches, 11 inches, I don't know, 10.5, depending on how tall you are. I'm just a 5.0. So. so for increases, we are just going to start as usual, just like before. And for me, this is where I started with two double crochets. And... I am going to make one cluster. That's my second one. Three. And four. So I made four clusters, right? And after four clusters, then I need to make an increase. So after every four clusters, you'll need to make an increase. So how will we make an increase? Two, three, four. And I'm just going to go in the middle stitch of this cluster from before, in the middle stitch on top of it, and make three double crochets in that same stitch. So we are making an increase. Okay, and then I will now go into the next space and make three double crochets. So that will be my one cluster. One, this is the second one. And this is the third one. The fourth one. And then after the fourth one, you make an increase. So this is four. Then I need to make an increase. So I go into the middle stitch. One, two, three, four. And then now I make an increase in this middle stitch on top of the previous cluster. I make three double crochets in there. And then I repeat. One. Yeah. So this is going to be it until you get back. So I went all around increasing after every fourth cluster and I've come to the end. I had to double crochet, so which, which means my ending will be a double crochet. And then slip stitch on top of the, the chain three. Okay, so then I will chain three, turn my work and my next row will be a row of no increase. So in the next row, I don't increase at all. So chain three counts as a stitch. So I'll go straight into this next one and make a cluster. And as you can see here, I had made an increase. So I'll just go in the space between the clusters. Three double crochets also here in this space so i'm going to go in every space with three double crochets 
until I get back to where I started the row until I end the round. So once you end the round, then I will do another row of no increase again. So it will, for this part, it is a row of increase, then two rows of no increase before we increase again, okay? So this is my first row of no increase, my first round of no increase, and then I know they look, uh, like there's no space but just put in between the clusters and then it will just give it create space so go around with a uh, row of no increase and then once you get to the round finish it off and then we do another round of no increase okay so and it's going to be a repeat like that so just let me just explain it to you because i don't want to do everything so I do a row of increase, right? And then the next two rows are no rows of increase. And then row of increase. Row of increase is here. Then next two rows, no increase. Then now here is the row of increase. But instead of increasing after every four, then I increase after every five. Okay? I'm increasing after every five in this part. And then once I've done that increase, then you see it's after every five. The first one was we were doing after every five, four clusters. And now we had the second increase we are doing after every five clusters. And once I've done with that row of increase, then I skip five rows of no increase. At, sorry, four rows of no increase at all. And then I, I do a row of increase and I'm increasing after every six clusters. And then I do six rows of no increase at all. Yeah, like that until I get to where I want my my sleeve to reach so three four five six so it's like that then i make an increase so i skip six clusters then i make an increase and you're going to just keep doing this until you have the height that you want okay so it's two two rows Two rows, four rows, six rows. Then I'm increasing like four clusters, five clusters, six clusters. I don't know whether it makes sense. I think I do, okay? And then once you have this, then you will do the other side. And I did about nine... 19 inches but then i wore it and so it was not you know long enough then i added about two inches so so uh this is it and once you are done with your sleeves both sleeves then i want to do the bottom part for the bottom part this was my preference what you can do is you can put a ribbing like the front post back post ribbing whatever you prefer but i wanted this this long chains that I have a top that is like that that I like. I can tie around, but in the pictures I did it differently. So I'll just show you how to make this bottom edging. Okay, so I'll make a long chain because I want it to be able to tie around my belly. Okay, so this is about I made a chain that is about, let's see, 20, 24 inches, 24, 25 inches. It's about 25 inches, okay? And then I want to attach it to the front part of my top. I counted all these and then got the middle. And that's where I will, I will attach it. This is my preference. You can change this. You don't need to do it like I do it. Okay, you can put the edging of your choice. 
so i'm going to just chain the same number of chains once i've attached it to the bottom of the top which is the middle part then make the same chains so for the first one you're going to skip one stitch going to the next stitch and yarn through pull through twice chain one and now it's going to be different so skip one going to the next one and make a half double crochet so you're going to go in this space between the half double crochet and the first uh, stitch thingy i don't know what to call it and make you have three loops pull through insert your hook and you have all these loops then pull through all the loops then you are going to make a half double crochet skip one stitch make a half double crochet and then you're going to go back in that space between the half double crochet and that cluster thingy and pull through three loops on the hook yarn over such a hook pull through again and then pull through all the loops and then skip one chain and then into the next chain make a half double crochet and then repeat so go into the space yarn over pull through yarn over pull through again and pull through all the loops so you are going to keep repeating that what is this stitch called i just forgot its name if you remember what it's called please comment and tell me so go all the way up to this side all right so i, I came all the way up here and this is going to be different so instead of two we are going to go in four times so that's one two three and four so this is going to be around the top where we're working for so i'll just go straight into the next cluster and make a half double crochet and then in the space work four times one two three four and then pull through and then go straight into the next cluster with a half double crochet and then work again four times so around the top we are working four times and the strings at the bottom uh, we are working two times so you're just going to go around the top with four and once all around once you get back to this other chain here then you'll start working the two like we did at the beginning and i'll meet you once you're done all right so i'm done and i have these two one is at the bottom one i worked up so this is how it looks you can just use this to tie around your waist if you want but as i wore it in the top that's not what i did so what i did in the top is just you know put it through the stitches so i'll just show you quick how i did it so i was going in like this this is in the granny stitch then i i have one I go through one at the top and then two at the bottom one at the top and then two at the bottom like this like this and and i went all the way to the back and i tied it at the back so once i was done with one side to the back i did the other side also to the back and i tied it to the back so that was more of tight around my waist like that yeah but if you don't want that you can just you know tie it around your belly and i think it looks cute i just didn't get a chance to do that and show you or you can put a normal ribbing at the bottom if you want you know or you can just leave it just have the this edging just around the bottom without these strings okay so it's totally up to you just yeah so that is it guys thank you so much for watching and th for those who have subscribed welcome to the family thank you for subscribing and for those who really support me i thank you so much so i will see you in the next tutorial don't forget to share like and please comment tell me how you like this top because i do love it 
and i can't wait to see your pictures on social media tag me it's sc crochets on all platforms tiktok facebook and instagram so see you in the next tutorial guys bye